Weeks away from an unnecessary government shutdown and in the midst of two foreign crises, Republicans have effectively paralyzed our legislature at a time when we desperately need it to function. And yet they still find the time to criticize President Biden over the most absurd things. And it's gotten so bad that even Fox News is shutting them down. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Okay, folks, so I have to draw your attention to Congressman George Santos, the disgraced uh, freshman Republican congressman from New York, the pathological liar, the poster boy for Republican ethics alongside Donald Trump. He issued this tweet a couple of days ago, actually yesterday. I hope that POTUS is having a great time soaking up the sun while the world burns and Americans are held hostage by Hamas. Of course, I don't know what he means by the world burns, but obviously we have, I think it was at least a dozen American hostages being held by Hamas uh, in the aftermath of the October 7th raid against southern Israeli cities. Now, more on that in just a second, but this is George Santos. Now, George Santos is a member of the House Republican Conference, the same House Republican Conference which can't elect a speaker, which is effectively paralyzed the House of Representatives. Right now, they're in recess. Congress is effectively deadlocked because in order to pass legislation, you require both chambers of Congress, okay? And because of George Santos and his party, and his party alone, not Democrats, we have not been able to reopen the legislature. So it might be helpful if Congress were fully functioning and working to help the president actively manage the crises that George Santos is talking about. It's not just George Santos. The One of the official uh, Republican Twitter pages, the RNC Research, which is arguably the worst, they're terrible, um, he, they basically regurgitate the same thing. Americans are still being held hostage by Hamas terrorists, and Joe Biden is at the beach. Okay. Now, in response to this, even Fox News is like, guys, this, this is really isn't accurate. So we're going to play this clip, and we'll unpack it together. Yeah, we, we certainly do. And I do want to mention, Griff, that uh, the president has been anything but off the grid while here in uh, Delaware. And of that call with the prime minister, the White House said that uh, President Biden expressed how welcome he is that these first two convoys of aid were able to make it into Gaza. Uh, they also said that the president of the leaders, quote, affirmed that there will now be continued flow of this critical assistance into Gaza. The president expressed appreciation for Israel's support in helping to accommodate the release of two American hostages. So the president also spoke with his national security team this morning, Pope Francis as well, plus the leaders of Germany, France, Italy, the UK, and Canada too. So the president's line here in Delaware, again, was very busy today. Even on that breezy beach walk we were just talking about, the president was on his cell phone during a portion of that. Now, earlier today, Secretary of State Antony so there you go. Even the Fox Propaganda Network is basically telling Republicans to shut up because even when he's in Delaware, because of telecommunications, the president is constantly working. He's constantly interfacing with his foreign counterparts, with his national security team, with the State Department, etc. and so forth. And as you see right there, there was a statement released saying that the president's pressure is what facilitated the release of two of those American hostages that George Santos says he's so concerned with. I want to play a quick clip here of the president speaking with the two hostages in question after they've been released. Hey, Judith. Yeah. Hello, President. I'm so glad you're home. Or not home, I'm glad you're out. Thank you so very, very much. Hey, Matt, how are you? God love you. I just want to say thank you for your services for Israel. Well, oh, I, 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 look, that's, that's been long serving. I'm just delighted we're able to get you out. We've been working on it a long time. We're gonna, we're gonna get them all out, God willing. I just want to say, I hope you're all, I hope you're both not only feeling good, but in good health as well. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, God bless you guys. So here's my point. There are times when they're perfectly legitimate criticisms to have of the opposite side. And Republicans are entitled to their criticisms of the president as well. Joe Biden is not perfect. Democrats are not perfect. If you have a legitimate grievance with how they're approaching a particular issue, 
then say it. But that's not really what the Republican Party, particularly House Republicans like George Santos, are doing. They're trying to distract from the fact that they are so incompetent and dysfunctional. These people couldn't open an umbrella, let alone the House of Representatives, let alone carefully manage foreign crises or arrange for the release of American hostages. George Santos isn't capable of that. His party's not capable of that. They are wildly inferior with respect to competence and seriousness, and they're just desperate that you and I and others will be distracted by clips of seeing Joe Biden walking on the beach. But we're not going to be because, again, telecommunications are what they are. The president can be on a cell phone. The president can be speaking with people. Again, his foreign counterparts, the State Department, the national security team managing the release of two American hostages. There's still more work to be done. And I'm sure he's working on it right now. As he says, we're going to get them all out. That may or may not happen, but at least he's actively working towards it. What's George Santos doing besides lying to his constituents, besides being federally indicted? What are his fellow House of Representatives Republicans doing at this time? As a matter of fact, we heard a couple of weeks ago after Israel was attacked by Hamas that it was Democratic leader, the minority leader, Hakeem Jeffries, who had to be briefed by the executive department and law enforcement and the State Department because there is no Speaker of the House on, from the Republican Party. They're, they've decapitated themselves themselves politically. They have failed to replace Kevin McCarthy. The candidates that they've lined up have been woefully inadequate. Jim Jordan, the least effective congressman in Congress, a MAGA extremist, really? And they have the option at any time because Hakeem Jeffries has publicly called them to, hey, let's make a deal. Let's have a bipartisan path forward. Let's elect a speaker, somebody who will work with Democrats in good faith, and we can reopen the House of Representatives, and we can get Congress back functioning. Because again, right now, the president proposed, I think it was $100 billion in foreign aid between Ukraine and Israel. He can't approve that unilaterally. He can't spend that money unilaterally. It requires congressional authorization. And in order to have congressional authorization, you have to have the House of Representatives open. So even though House Democrats are behind it, even though Senate Democrats are behind it, and yes, even though Senate Republicans, that's right, Republicans are behind it as well. Without House Republicans and people like George Santos getting their act together, there's nothing we can really do. President Biden is doing his part. He still has his job, unlike, again, Rep Republican leaders in the House of Representatives. He's doing everything in his power. What are Republicans doing? Failing publicly and hoping you won't notice.